So I also have an interpretation of the angelic tongue. And so I heard, pray for China. Okay, what do you want me to pray? Pray and send angels to go to China to activate people who are calling for Christ to come and for the power of the kingdom to come and activate these people and call them into service and enable them to bring forth the gospel of truth. And so as I was praying, I was naming angels. I was, excuse me, I was naming angels. The Father would bring me names and they're names I couldn't think of. I mean, I didn't know any of these names in an alien mind. Can you recall them? Uh, no, I can't recall them. I just sent them. But I could give you a demonstration of how I would send them. I would name Karakta, Vishaktuna, Burukcha, Mekadana, Kunisha, Muhudi. I would name names that came to me, and as I was naming them, I would see a flash of light leaving my mind, just like something being birthed from me. And I knew that it's like little torpedoes of energy. Just, I was launching angelic messengers. I was launching from my mind. I was birthing energetic forms that would land in China. And I saw, in my vision, a map of the world and just just like torpedoes landing in China. They were just landing there. Just going boom, 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 boom. How many? 420. Now, I, I know that number because I said, God, how many am I sending? He said, 420. I'll tell you when to stop. And so I just went and went and went and went. Stop. So I sent 420 angels to China. Now you might say, what is the relevance of that? Well, it was a command. Father, what do I pray? I open my mouth and he speak. He spoke. So it's like, I open my mouth, Father, you speak. The words of Father go through my mouth and they shall not return void to him. That what I sent shall be achieved and done. And the relevance of it is that I said, I want to see a witness, Father. Is, is, is there anything to show me that what has been done is happening? And uh, I was on a newsletter from the churches that had various world prayer networks and things like that. And it said, suddenly, the Christian movement in China has increased and people are being born again. People are being activated. People are starting to, to, to boldly pronounce the gospel in China. And that was within the month. It happened within that month. And I, I said to myself, Father, I know this is beautiful. And I know I've been doing that type of thing anyway for a long time. Because I've always asked Jesus, what do you want me to pray? What would be a beneficial prayer? And the Holy Spirit would bring me a prayer and I'd speak it like a command. It would be a command that came forth from my mouth. Just like Jesus, when he spoke, he could only say what he heard the Father saying. And I said, Father, I want that to be true for me too. I want to only speak what I hear you saying. And uh, I learned through the prayer language and interpreting prayers that that was so. And I also can make commands uh, just in English. And, and I know that they happen. I'll give you an example. Now, if they don't come through any invention of my own mind. They come through uh, something that is required to happen. Now, for example, in 2004, I was on the internet on a thing called uh, Yahoo, Yahoo Chat. And we were in a Christian chat room. We, you know, we just type in and uh, we're communicating through text. And there were three or four people in the room, and I knew one of them. And uh, there was a Christian woman over in Florida. And she was saying, there's a tremendous hurricane here. There's a storm, and our house is shaking. And up, I can see other houses in the distance flying around and there's bits of stuff flying everywhere and the whole place is being destroyed. Can you help me? Can you pray for me? And I'm, at that time I was just chatting away in text. I didn't realize the, the sincerity of the call. I thought it was just like just a general chat type of thing and I hadn't paid much notice to it in particular. And uh, I heard God say to me, well, are you going to let that sister just suffer there? And when I heard God say that, I said, what shall I do? He said, type into the room, who would agree to pray with me regarding this storm? And uh, this other guy that I knew said, I will. I said, okay, I'm going to type a command. And I typed the command. I said, what shall I say? And the voice came to me, storm, rise up 
and dissipate. And so I typed in, storm, rise up and dissipate. And then I just carried on talking, like in chit-chat in the room. Never thought much more about it. And then I heard the voice say to me, ask her what happened to the storm. And so I typed into the text, I forget what her name was now, I said, what has happened to the storm? She said, it's gone. It just rose up and dissipated. It's gone. And so the command that comes is very powerful. I said, Father, for the sake of your children, let this storm be gone. For the sake of your children. For those who are in that city who are calling through faith, giving a prayer request to those who could help her. It was a it was a something in the spirit. She was genuine. There was a need, a requirement for the children of light to avoid the storm. And Father spoke to me and he said, You do it. See, there's a lot of Christians around who pray to a God outside themselves. And they say, Father, do this. Father, do that. You can't make God jump through a hoop. You are the son. You are the point of power. The descent of the power comes down through you. You are the operative agency in this world to bring forth the miracles and do the healing. Father works through the son. The son doesn't command the father to do something. The father speaks through the son and the son speaks and it's done. You see, people have got it back to front. People say, oh, God, do this. God, do that. God, God can't even hear it. He said, I command you. I bring through you the voice and you speak. You are my mouth. You are my hands. You are my eyes. You are my feet. You are my body. You are the instrument of righteousness. You are the instrument through which I will bring the manifestation of the kingdom of life into the earth. He's saying, you can't do it the other way around. You can't say that I'm a little devil, you know, because what are you? If you say that you are a flesh and blood body, you're the devil. If you say that you're going to die, you're the devil, right? Jesus has abolished sin and death, and yet people still believe in him. And they want to take power in their devilship, in their separation from God, in their surviving and hiding from God. They want power to come so that they can command God to do what they want in their alienation. No, it doesn't work that way. It works this way. You are the Holy Son of God. You've denied it, yes, but you're beginning to remember. So open up your heart and let God speak through you, and the word that comes forth from your lips shall not return void unto the good the Father in you who sent it. See, now the kingdom of heaven, where is it? It's in you. Where's Father? In you. Where are the saints in light? In you. Where is everything that's true? It's in you. Right? So if you, if you bring the truth out through the gateways of your mind, you bestow the beauty upon the world. But if you are thinking this world is true and you're trying to change the world, you are the devil manipulating the illusion. But if you know that you are the Christ, the only begotten Son of God, you're dissolving the illusion by using a new mind. A mind that knows the truth and is the truth. If you continue to project the vain imaginations of a past historical record of yourself, if you continue to project into the future all of those errors of the past, you're going to witness in your present moment the lies of deception. But if you in the present moment tap into the spirit and dissolve the past, you're going to dissolve the past and the future, and the kingdom of God shall appear right here and now in an ever-increasing continuum of time of expansion of oneness as you recollect all the members into the oneness within your own reference of truth. You see? So where do you see yourself in the future and how will you be regarded by people in your community, your own family and so on? Well, of course we're creating our own future as we're going along. And that we're creating a different future to what we would have had by eliminating the past records of our mind. And so we're walking continually into a better future as we sow from the spirit of truth. How I'm seen by the community is really irrelevant. But it could be important. For example, I've been rejected by the church. And I knew that before I started going there. I knew that I was called of God to bring light into the darkness. And the darkness hates the light. In other words, those people in the church who have got set ideas, set doctrines, set beliefs, they will do anything. As you know, in the old days, they used to kill you, burn you at the stake. They used to um, excommunicate you. They'd do anything to shut up the heretics. And the heretics were always the ones bringing the truth. The Gnostics, the heretics, they were the ones bringing the truth to the deceived church. We know that. Because if the church is true, how come people still die? How come they preach sin and death and separation if the church is true? You see, it can't be true. And so I was rejected by the church because I came as a light in a dark place. 
and the darkness tries to put out the light. But the light cannot be extinguished. I'm tapped into Jesus. I'm tapped into the Holy Spirit. I'm tapped in to the source of truth within myself. And I can only bring forth greater magnitude of light. I can dispel the darkness and I can change all minds along with mine, for mine is a power of God. The minds that are trying to put me out have no true source and can have no true effect. So how the community perceives me is relative to what they believe. But the moment they realize within themselves is the light of Christ and they foster the light of Christ. In other words, they let the day star burst in their own heart as a light shining in a dark place. As they realize that they are as God created them. As they realize that they are the Christ, the only begotten Son. As they realize that in themselves, they'll feed the truth rather than the lie. And so as you grow this Christ in you, as your identity, perception dissolves. But if people would judge me through their perception, all judgment is false. So if anyone would judge me and say, he's a heretic or he's this or that, they're using the carnal mind, which is the devil. And in that action of recognizing that they're using the carnal mind to judge me, they're going to find their healing because they'll realize that as you judge, so shall you be judged, you see. But as you release every one of their sin, that's what Jesus said, woman, go and sin no more. In other words, Jesus said, go and don't sin. But the power is in overlooking sin. If you start, take Hitler, for example, everyone says, oh, look at Hitler, what he's done, he's killed this, that, and the other thing. Well, Hitler, in the eyes of God, is pure and holy and undefiled. God made Hitler perfect. The image or the mask that Hitler played, the role that he played, he only played out the thoughts of the world. He was only a vent for playing out the thoughts that were in other people's mind. For example, in the United States, there was a lot of movement going around about exterminating certain races and, and ethnic groups. And Hitler just played out the dreams of other different nations and hatred that's already in the mind of people. So Hitler still is perfect. What he did is part of the dream. Everything that's in this world is a part of the dream of Adam. Jesus was the first to wake up from the dream that he slept. He was the first to wake up. And so when you overlook the sin of Hitler, for example, and say, oh, look, he's still perfect, you'll dissolve all of the crimes that he's done. You, you'll dissolve them in your mind, and they won't exist anymore. But if you look at the crimes, they'll exist in your mind. And because they exist in your mind, you're going to judge, and you'll be judged with the same judgment. That's why God judges no one. Father judges no man. He's left all judgment to the Son, and you are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. And the Bible says, the Apostle Paul says, judge with the judgment of God. Judge righteous judgment. In other words, God made you righteous. Judge yourself to be righteous. Not only you, but judge your neighbor to be righteous. Why? Because love your neighbor as yourself. God is your neighbor just as much as God is you. Love your enemies. Because your enemy is of God too. And you made him an enemy in your mind. God didn't. It was your judgments that made him an enemy. And even though he might come to attack you, if you defend yourself not, you will stop his attack. You now have uh, this on record of uh, your beliefs. Um, you're going to have your uh, grandchildren grow up, and they will do this. Have you a message for your grandchildren in the future, and your wife today, and your daughter today, and your son today? Yes. Be dedicated to look within yourself for Christ in you is whole and complete and Christ in you is you. The mind that you currently use in reference to this world is totally untrue. Only the mind of Christ is true and that is your reality. As you will determine within yourself to set your mind on your spirit. This is the husband, this is the bride. When they get married you should put on a new image of yourself and this flesh and blood body will dissolve because this flesh and blood body and this world is the constitution of alien thoughts that you hold in your reference about yourself from your historical reference. And yet if you go beyond history, you go to eternity, which is the substance of reality, which is you. If you can bring eternity into your time-lock memories, the keys of eternity will unlock all time-lock memories and the mystery will dissolve the history. And the mystery is Christ in you, your hope of glory coming into your own awareness and your own true walk in the light. As you open the gateways of your mind, your body reference about yourself, the kingdom shall shine through the virginity of your mind and shine a glorious light on all creation and creation will lean back to you and bless you. As you bless everything, it will bless you. And through the virginity of your mind, you shall birth a new image. and you. Shall